Hello, I thought it was time I gave you a bit of a video update since it's been exactly one year to the day that I uh, did my last video update. So I just wanted to uh, update you on what's been happening with me photographically throughout 2018. If you watched my previous video update, you'll probably be aware, or if you follow me on social media, you'll be aware that I've launched my first book last year, uh, Capture Lakeland, which was uh, a book documenting my landscape photography journey in the English Lake District and covering over 15 to 20 years of my uh, my images from the lakes. And uh, this time last year I was just posting out the first copies which uh, went all over the world and I've been absolutely amazed by the response I've had from people who have bought the book. The feedback from people has been really humbling from uh, people connecting with my images and you know remembering good times in the Lake District or just being appreciative of a nice image has been really a worthwhile project for me. As we are today um, I've got 31 copies left of the original thousand edition run of Capture Lakeland so I'm absolutely blown away by the level of support the book's received so thank you very much if you've bought a copy it means the world to me that um, so many people have come out and supported me with a purchase it's really quite humbling. So during 2018, as well as promoting the book, uh, I've been quite active with my landscape photography shoots. I've been on about 114 shoots throughout 2018, um, predominantly in the Lake District as usual. And I'm hoping to curate the best of my uh, images, what I've captured throughout 2018, and present them in a new book, Capture Lakeland Volume 2, which I'm hoping to publish at the start of 2019. So that's going to be available for pre-order very shortly, hopefully. Um, other things to note throughout 2018, um, while on the subject of Capture Lakeland, uh, the book was nominated for Outdoor Book of the Month by um, BBC Country File magazine. It was in the April edition, it was nominated for Outdoor Photography Book of the Month around springtime as well, which was great. I was also... Uh, I was also runner-up in Lake District Book of the Year, which, uh, well, category runner-up, which was a massive achievement for, for somebody who, who's produced his first book and self-published it as well. And then to top it all off this month, in December 2018, I was shortlisted for the Great Outdoors magazine Outdoor Book of the Year. And uh, I'm in the January edition of the Great Outdoors magazine this month, which, uh, again, the level of support received for the book has been overwhelming really it's fantastic so no pressure on the second book then to see if I can uh, produce something equally as uh, as touching to all the people who have supported me with it. Uh, 2018 as well saw me become commended in landscape photography landscape photographer of the year competition which is very popular here in the UK uh, I'm sure it is across Europe as well. Um, I ended up having my image of Ashness Jetty in the Lake District uh, shortlisted and then commended, which was great. So that appears in the book, which is on sale now through Amazon and various other places probably. And uh, it's, it's, I took that image, which uh, appears in the book, back in August 2017, I think it was. And it was one of the sort of first few months of me getting to grips with the Hasselblad X1D. And I, I note from looking through the book, it's the only image actually f shot on a Hasselblad which features in la uh, Landscape Photographer of the Year. Uh, so that's quite um, an interesting fact, for, well, for me at least. Anyway, I'm quite surprised at that. So while on the subject of equipment, um, many of you have obviously seen my previous vlogs where I've talked about my Leica equipment and also my journey to getting to the Hasselblad X1D. Um, the, the Leica videos are still really popular, I'm quite amazed to be honest, and uh, a lot of people still comment and ask me questions through the, the comment section of those videos, and I always try and respond. Uh, obviously you might be aware if you follow the Leica brand that the MD has now been updated to an M10D, and uh, many of you have been asking me if I'm going to upgrade to that camera. Initially, um, I was seriously considerate and I actually was offered a, a Leica M10D by Leica Mayfair down in London. Uh, but I, I thought about it for a while and I declined it actually because uh, 
I'm just still really happy with the Leica MD, what I've got. It's a fantastic camera and it produces absolutely beautiful images, what I'm uh, still very much um, attracted to. I mean, more so as well as the images it produces, just the operating experience without the LCD screen on the back. And a lot of people don't get that camera, whereas for me, I do and I absolutely love it. It's fantastic. Um, I've trimmed down my Leica lenses as well now, just to, so I've got two lenses left. I've got the 50mm Summilux, which is a fantastic lens. That's pretty much on the camera all the time now. And I've still got the 28mm Summer on, uh, which is again, a fantastic vintage style lens, which I do use occasionally, but um, still very much in love with the Leica. It's fantastic, but predominantly I'm using the Hasselblad X1D as my landscape camera now. Uh, and I'm, always amazed at the image quality it produces and just the natural look of the images what come out there and my second book Capture Lake and Volume 2 will be predominantly if not exclusively Hasselblad images and when I look at those images compared to the images what are in Capture Lake and Volume 1 you can see my professional development as a photographer if you will throughout the you know the course of the last 15-20 years and it's it's quite astounding really how uh, how I can see that now that I've put the book together. So it's been a very useful tool for that. Um, I turned 40 in 2018 and decided to treat myself with a new camera as you do. And I, uh, I went for a second hand Leica MP film camera, which I was really excited about getting that. Obviously the connection with film, you've seen the journey here on this channel um, in the past and it was, it was a beautiful camera, it arrived, however there was a problem with it, there was a hole in the um, shutter curtain, I think is the right terminology, which resulted in all the images having a light spot on them when I got them developed, so that was quite disappointing. So that camera went back, however that opened the door to a medium format film camera and I went for a Hasselblad 503CX, which is absolutely brilliant, totally love it. I've um, it's a six by six square format on 120 roll film. And I've shot probably over 200 rolls of film now. Uh, predominantly, again, making landscapes, but I've obviously got into a bit of portraiture as well. I've been taking some nice portraits of uh, my children and also some people who are brave enough to allow me to point my camera at them and, uh, and make an image. So that's been really quite uh, a positive experience it's been a massive learning experience for me in terms of moving forward with my photography understanding exposure a little bit more understanding how how, in, how I've been manually metering for each scene I've been shooting which has been uh, you know you, you can see why photography is so popular these days because obviously you use a digital camera and it's it's so easy just to turn a dial on the back of the camera and look at the screen and think, oh, that, that looks all right, I'll 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 go for that. I would be quite um, interested to see how many of the modern day digital photographers actually understand exposure and can make a decision without the aid of the, the LCD. And again, this is why the Leica MD is quite a, a powerful camera for me, because you don't get any of that. You've really got to make the decision yourself and the unknown of whether you've got it right or not, I quite like. It's uh, it's like getting an email from the National Lottery saying we've got exciting news about your ticket. I don't check that email for about three days because I like the feeling of what if. <laughs> and, uh, you know, usually it's a quid 50 or something like that, but it's uh, it's quite nice to um, to have the suspense and, and the, the surprise or later on. It can be quite frustrating as well, but Film photography has been a big part of 2018 for me. If I'd have been more on the ball with the vlogs, I would have documented that journey, to be honest. And, I, you know, I've been on about 115, 120 shoots throughout the course of the year. So I could have created some quite intriguing content, really. But um, I choose to focus more on uh, engaging fully within the landscape and making the best still images I can. That's really what drives me forward with that. So where else can I tell you? I've um, I went to Scotland this year, which uh, previously I've documented my trips to the Isle of Skye. And you, if you've followed my channel for a while, you know I'm very passionate about Scotland and Skye and the west coast of Scotland, really. And and this um, 
October I went up to Torridon where I uh, spent a week and it was absolutely fabulous really. It's, uh, I mean the weather was awful, let's be honest, but every corner you go around is an amazing scene, you know, it's fantastic and it's a real privilege to be able to go there and, uh, and make images and the weather just seems to come and go very quickly, you know, you can wake up thinking, oh, the day's written off and within half an hour it's totally the opposite, you know, blue sky and no wind and then within another half an hour you, it's snowing, so it's, it's quite interesting. So I explored a little bit around the Torridon area, I didn't do any mountain climbing or anything like that, just exploring, finding my bearings really and uh, went round uh, a part of the North Coast 500 route in my new vehicle, which um, if you've stayed tuned to my channel previously, I've removed a few videos now, but it's quite, I've got a new vehicle, which is quite the opposite to the car I had last time. And it's probably the best photographic tool you could have. So I went for a, a VW California, which I um, can't believe I never bought one years ago. So useful for us landscape photographers to get in the right, get in, to location, stay there and sit it out really if the weather's not quite right or wild camping it somewhere where you can wake up before sunrise and be at the right place without a mad rush to get there. So it's been quite a, an interesting few months. I only got that vehicle in October so I, I used it for the Scotland trip and my uh, adventures around the Lake District over autumn but coming up in 2019 and typically now between spring of next year I'm hoping to explore a few new locations which uh, the van's obviously going to give me that freedom to set off and and see where I end up and it's quite an exciting prospect really. So that's something for me to look forward to uh, in 2019. Um, I'm also developing a new website at the minute as well which will be hopefully live in January or February which will showcase a brand new collection of images what I've been creating over the last year to 18 months and like I say I'm hoping to time that with the launch of Capture Lakeland Volume 2 um, reinvent myself a little bit as a landscape photographer I guess I think my personal development has been such that it's uh, I've moved forward or I've moved through I feel I, I've moved up a level or two perhaps if uh, if that makes any sense and uh, the personal development is something I'm I'm quite into for myself really so I'm constantly trying to push myself to uh, to see things clearer and and capture them a lot better in terms of how I uh, communicate with the landscape really so that's interesting so there you go there's a bit of an update and uh, hopefully I'll be speaking to you again sooner than another year passes by time seems to fly by these days but um, I'll try and do more vlogs if uh, if this goes down well and uh, I do stand by the comments that you know these videos have been quite useful for me and it's helped me engage more with people and um, there seems to be a very good positive response to somebody being brave enough to stand up in front of a camera and, and speak rather than write something anonymously on a on a blog perhaps so so thanks for engaging with my content with my social media with this channel still which still gets a lot of views even though I haven't done anything with it for a year now and like I say, hopefully I'll have some new fresh content coming soon in uh, 2019. So for now, I wish you a Merry Christmas and uh, all the best for the new year. And hopefully I'll speak to you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.